Hey there Falcons fans, we're about to dive into today's video. Before we do that, we are getting closer and closer to 1,000 subscribers on the new Falcons YouTube channel. The sooner we get there, the soon YouTube's going to do us as a real channel and we can do even more videos for you guys. So if you want to stay up on what's going on around the Falcons, help us get to 1,000. We're not the fastest ever to do it here at Chat Sports, but we got to get there sooner rather than later. So if you haven't already, hit that big red button and subscribe. Tom down here to talk some trades around the Falcons. So Steve Weish, the NFL Network reporter, who used to be a Falcons beat writer, mind you, thinks the team actually wants to trade down from number four overall and says the interest, or at least perceived interest, in the Falcons going quarterback at number four is actually just a smokescreen to help facilitate a trade. He suggested instead that the team will focus on the trenches, on the offensive line, on the defensive line. And if you're not going to go quarterback at four, which they might not, I think trading down makes the most sense in the world. You could move down and still get a good offensive line prospect, depending on how far you want to move down. You move down beyond four, you're probably not going to get Penny Sewell. Bengals probably take him at number five. But Rashawn Slater, Christian Darisaw, two potential left tackles. Well, they could be there in the early to mid-teens even, pot potentially. Elijah Vera Tucker, if you want a guard, who could also play some tackle at a USC. And then if you move way down, I'm talking like with the Bears or Washington, Samuel Cosby could be there in the late teens, early 20s. You could go defensive line as well. Now, I don't think defensive tackle is the biggest need for this organization in terms of Christian Barmore, but you could consider him. The edges are not worth the number four overall pick. But some combination of Quiddy Pay, Aziz Ojolari, Gregory Russo, Jalen Phillips, uh, you can throw in a Joseph Asai from Texas if you want, a Jason Owe from Penn State. One of those edges would be there almost wherever you traded down into round one. You could still take the first guy, the first edge off the board, if you were to move down to like eight potentially. Or even in the teens, there would be one of those guys, if not multiple guys, left on the clock for you. And of course, you could also go take Patrick Sertan or Caleb Farley. So I'm of the mindset, take a quarterback at number four or trade the pick. Acquire more assets and move down and continue your what? Maybe it's not a full-fledged rebuild, but a retooling of this team. So what do you guys want to do with that number four overall pick? Type in T for trade it or type in K for keep. Get your votes in for me in the comments section. Let's go to Dante Fowler now. How about cutting him? Oh boy, this one was suggested by SB Nation, the uh, alcoholic blog over there. Had the 11 and a half sack season with the Rams in 2019, and then just three this past year with the Atlanta Falcons. And that's not very good. Now, they paid him a pretty good amount of money. There are some potential cap savings. You, you cut him right now with no designation. You save $3.21 million. It's not a lot of money to be saved. You could designate him a post-June 1st cut, which would save you almost $8 million. That spreads out the dead money cap hit over two years. Where things get tricky for Fowler and the Falcons is that a decision must be made rather quickly. Now, I know Fowler did not play well last year, but you're probably hoping for a bounce-back year. They guaranteed him $23 million. $6 million of his salary this season is already guaranteed. And an ad additional $7 million will fully guarantee on the fifth day of the new league year. That's coming up on March 21st. So you can designate him a post-June 1st cap cut and cut him before that to save the extra money, but you're not going to save all that much. And I wonder if in the end for the Falcons, you, you give Fowler one more year. Because you can move on from Dante Fowler. I think you can still bank on starting. You're hoping for a better year, but you can assume he's one of your starters. You already cut Alan Bailey. Charles Harris, Stephen Means, John Kaminsky. Man, you cut Fowler, you got nothing at the edge of spot. And maybe Kaminsky could be a piece for you down the road, but he was still pretty raw coming out. He's not ready to start as far as I'm concerned. So I think the best bet for Atlanta, at least the way I view it, is let's roll with Fowler for one more year. And if it doesn't work out, he puts up three sacks again. Oh, he is the most obvious cut in the history of ever. So what do you guys want to do? Should the Falcons cut Dante Fowler. Why for yes or and for no? Get your votes in there. I lean no, but if you're trying to reset on defense, I'm at least open to the possibility of it. 
Now, if you cut Dante Fowler, or if you keep him, you still need more edge rush help. That's why Bleacher Report named the Falcons' ideal free agent target as Carl Lawson. They pitched this idea as the, the Bengals would let him walk, and they might tag him, by the way, but with other free agents like Shaq Barrett and, and Yannick Ngakwe, Lawson could be had on the cheap. I actually am unconvinced that is wholly the case. Now, I like Carl Lawson a lot. I was a big fan of his coming out of Auburn. Frankly, one of my best draft hits as far as I'm concerned. And ever, I had a round two grade on the guy. He went round four, and he was totally worth it. Coming off a five and a half sacks, and you go, well, that's only two and two more than, than, uh, than Dante Fowler, Tom. What are you doing? Lawson, I don't think, was used very well by the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm not saying... He's going to have a Shaq Barrett exact breakout if he were to leave, but I think he could put up a similar-ish breakout where I think he could be a double-digit sack guy on the right team in the right defense. So if I'm Atlanta, I would love to get Carl Lawson. I'm not convinced he's going to be the cheapest option out there. So what I want you guys to do now is reply with your number one free agent target for the Falcons. Maybe it's a cornerback, maybe it's an edge, maybe it's a safety. That's a huge need for the organization. Let me know what you guys think your number one free agent target for Atlanta. I don't think anyone's going to put this name on here, at least I'd be surprised. Adrian Peterson. This was floated by the Falcons Wire, the USA Today branch, as a free agent move and free agent target, right? Now, Peterson would certainly provide vet leadership and frankly if you need a veteran stopgap starter Peterson and even at his advanced age can still do it but he is an aging player I also don't necessarily know how great of a scheme fit he would be in the Arthur Smith offense but you can figure that out I think at this point in his career Peterson is fine like he is not an elite starter he's probably going to get you around four yards per carry like he did last year. And even if you bring in Peterson, and let's say you move on from free agents Todd Gurley and Brian Hill, you're still going to draft a running back early on. Or at least that's your most likely path because Peterson's a one-year stopgap for you. This is not someone you sign and you go, oh, well, there we go. We've got him locked and loaded for four years or whatever. So I'm open to this idea. I don't think it's the best idea ever. But if you just want someone cheap, someone reliable, someone to be a veteran leader for you, I'm okay with that. But you still got to find a future option. Like in terms of filling your need, Peterson doesn't really do that for an organization at this point in his NFL career, even though he is a future Hall of Famer. No, no doubts about that one. So do you want Adrian Peterson? Once again, get your votes in here. One for yes or zero for no. While you guys are typing your votes down there, make sure you are subscribed. If you want more Falcons videos, hit that big red button. It's very simple here at Chat Sports. The more subscribers, the more videos we're able to do for you guys. We've got a lot of different team channels here. The Falcons is the latest one. So hit that big red button and subscribe at chatsports.com. Touch Falcons TV. To Tyler Eifert now, another free agent target. This one floated out by uh, Sports Talk Atlanta. I don't mind this one. Uh, the, the, the Jags declined his team option, saved him like $5 million or something. It makes him a free agent. Eifert was, at one point early in his career, looked like one of the best young tight ends in the NFL. And then he had, what I'm going to use the phrase, all of the injuries. And I'm worried you heard me say a lot of injuries. He had all of them. Uh, he was always hurt, could never stay healthy. He stayed mostly healthy, though, the past two years. Unfortunately for Eifert, those injuries have added up, and he hasn't been the same guy in his NFL career. But you look at where the Falcons are at in terms of the tight end position. He gave up a second-round pick for Hayden Hurst, which I didn't love. But Luke Stalker's a free agent. Uh, Jaden Graham, not Jimmy Graham, Jaden Graham is an ERFA, so he'll be back. But we also know, based on Arthur Smith's offense, he loved calling formations involving two or even three tight ends. I mean, 38%, I think, was the number of two tight end sets. That's one of the highest rates in the NFL. So you should probably try and find a way to add at least a potential option at tight end, too. Maybe you could go draft there, but I think Eifert could fill that role. He's no longer the guy he was when he first came out of Notre Dame when he looked like a future superstar. He just can't produce in the same fashion, although I will make note, if you go from the Gardner Minshew, Mike 
Glennon, whoever else they were playing at quarterback for Jacksonville last year, Jake Luton, thank you, Producer Sam, to Matt Ryan, I think the numbers would go up at least a little bit. 